Hi, I'm back again, Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands. Um, I hope you enjoyed my previous episode on um, my steampunk rainbow cogs and flowers and skulls and what have you. Um, just a quick recap, we did some discs to layer and we're going to work some more on those in a minute. I did a second coat on this one because this was nail polish. Um, give it a little bit of a, a glitzy look. And we're going to work some more. I've been practicing doing my cogs. It's not too bad. It's not quite even, but you know, we, we'll work out a way of doing that. I'm thinking maybe draw some lines to follow so we can work on that but while I was away I found some lovely goodies yes wonderful goodies I found some springs oh this one's got tangled up already I don't quite want to do that why are you not coming out twist you the right way oh and that was on the floor we'll get that in a minute so I got two of these nice big ones a couple of medium sized ones and a little twiddly one I also found some keys different size keys don't even remember where they come from probably a old house somewhere um, we used to live at but then keys that I don't need anymore so don't worry I'm not going to glue my front door key to the picture um, a solid spring which would be a nice background piece a peg spring um, a diddly little spring so remind us we're coming into springtime with all these springs and some rivets oh why this one seems to be stuck to itself yeah and some so we're going to have a play with those let's get these bits of paper out my way where i've been doing my cogs now then we shall begin move this out the way I managed to <laughs> little story story time are you sitting comfortably I did my second coat my third coat even on here now if you look closely at this bit here you might see Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You might see a paw print. That's because. Oh dear. I do apologise. That is because my lovely pussy cat decided to paddy paw over the wet paint. So we've had to follow his trail and wipe his paw and wipe the surfaces that he walked on. Luckily, it's water-based paint. So, <laughs> excuse me, Peter. I hope you can edit that out because four sneezes in a row might be too much for anybody. Just be dozing off to sleep, and I wake you up with a almighty sneeze. Not good. So, I'm going to peel off the plasticated back of these discs because it's going to be difficult to paint on them because they're um, like a vinyl surface so I'm going to get rid of that but I can use this side for something else so I'm not going to get rid of it completely just not at the moment and I want to colour this back as I said in the last episode 
I want to give the back of these some colour. Now I've decided to use my navy blue, this one, because it's a nice dark colour but it's also a bright colour um, which will help maybe reflect back down onto the picture. Was I invading your space? I'm spreading out and he's just having trouble on the um, tech desk because I'm invading his space. So I'm just going to colour in the back of this and we'll see how it plays on the spring. I'm not sure which end of the spring to have up and which end to have down. I might have one one way and one the other way just as a, a bit of a quirky situation. But let's see. So I will do another possibly another couple of coats on here but we can still use this to experiment and get our layout roughly mm. which is yeah it's very um i can't remember what they it called it. it was some sort of shimmer i believe so mm. so this is the sort of as far as it's going to stick out So if I hold it on and tilt it, you will see the sideways effect and you see why I wanted to um, colour the base. Now obviously I have to find a way of securing this to this and I'm thinking hot glue gun might be the way to go but I, I need to do some experimenting but we're not going to get to that today anyway so that's fine so that's about as high as I want to go and it's not too high now these springs are obviously higher so what I can do is I can get my wire cutters and I can make two from one I can find my wire cutters. I'm sure I put them out. No, they're my in the top drawer. Now these are tweezer ones. These are tweezer ones. Yes, this is what I'm not going to cut that wire. So in the top drawer to the side of the multicolored drawers I'm getting a little bit more organized as to what thank you that's perfectly what I wanted lovely so I'm going to use my little jewelry pliers uh, cutters and we want different heights so we want it so that it's not going to be as tall as this one because it's going to be a taller one so I'm going to cut it here, try to anyway, goodness that's tough, you wait the spring's going to go shooting across the room in a minute, she says hopefully, at least it means it's separated, right have I made a dent in that? as easy as I thought it was going to be oh my goodness right we're going to hand it over to the strong hands and see if he can cut them oh well done did you hear that satisfying click flatten that bit out and do that with the flat pliers might have needed some stronger 
stronger cutters rather than my jewellery ones. I hadn't reckoned on the strength of this coil. So, well, at least it's going to be built to last, eh? Hey? That's something, I suppose. So, that needs to be flattened down. So, I'm going to twist somehow. Goodness, it's really resisting me. Resistance is futile. You will flatten. Right, I think I got him. Yeah, okay. But what I might do is have holes through here. So pierce some holes and twist the coil into it and that will hold it securely into place. So we will work out our positioning, mark a point and then I can screw to maybe one layer underneath the picture and it will hold my springs in place and I won't have to rely on the strength of the glue when it's hanging vertically um, from the board so that that's the plan for that I might have to get a little tiny pilot drill thing to do that um, and this might have to be pulled out a bit more to um, accommodate that but that, that's my plan to secure them um, so the little baby springs I'm sure I can cut that surely I can I'm going to cut that in several little places okay so let's do this in random snippety dips di dip di dips snippety do da snippety day my pliers or cutters live to see another day. How about that? Now, I need to pull, pull a bit on the old coil just to get in there. Ah, that's it. Get me in there. Wibbly wobbly. Yes, yay, I did it. I don't know where the other piece went, but I've got one piece. Oh, there it is. So that's not as high as that one. That's about the same height, but it's a different width, so it's different textures. Um, I'm going to cut this in half again, if I can. Try to without it shooting across. Hey, I'm getting the hang of it now. Right, so we have little baby springy ones, and what I might do with those, thinking of it, I might put a flower on the end. So bring this forward a bit. So we have flowers on twisty stalks. I can hold it so we can see what the effect it's going to be. So yeah, we'll have the flower coming out from the board on a twisty stalk. I like that idea. Just come up with that. So we have different colours. We have the turquoise, we have the purple and I have a, a moody black. So I can wind them in. That in the bottom of the flower there's a little convenient little hole which I can secure my um, my flowers into see that little hole in there that's where I can twist my um, wire into so that that's going to be fun have them dotted around turquoise, we got the purple and we got the black. Or oh, actually it's a bronzy black, that's a, a lovely colour. Twist that in. Beautiful. 
beautiful. There we go, lovely little bouquet. So there are things to work with. We've got two coils, but one's fallen on the floor and I'll retrieve that later. And then the keys, what I'd like to do with the keys is I would like to stain them. Now I've been having a bit of fun. Where'd it go? Oh my goodness, where's it gone? Come back, come back. Oh, there you are. Oh. So I've been playing around with my inks and I tried on this rivet thing and I am really happy with the, um, I'll bring this background in again. I'm really happy with the result there. It's green. Um, I'll try and tell you the, the colours of the inks. I have these inks. They're alcohol inks. One is called tangerine. And the other is aqua green. And they together work and make a lovely patina on the items that we're going to be staining. So I have a little bit of tin foil here to contain the ink and also stain the tin foil, which I can then use. So I'm going to work on these keys now and some more rivets, and I will drizzle some ink over them they need a little while to dry and then do the other side I'm trying to decide whether to do the springs or not and I think these shiny springs I will do um, but this one I won't because this one's already got a nice patina to it um, I have a grungy key here and that's a lovely colour as well and it's got a bit of markings on it so that one I'm not going to touch that one I'm not going to touch but some of the more shiny ones um, um, this one I'll, will be okay I'm, I'm getting directions from the wing here as to where to position my tin foil so we're in screen um, so if you're wondering why I'm moving the tinfoil up and down, that's the reason to try and get me in picture. I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and not necessarily where I am on the on the page, so to speak. So that's the bit behind it. I've also found these little gizmos. So we might have a little go with them as well. I'm not quite sure whether we can use them or not, but it's worth having a look at them. They're, I'm not quite sure what they are, to be honest, or what their purpose is, but they're pointy on one end and curved at the top. Um, some sort of pin. Anyone tell me what they are and what they're used for? That would be lovely. But I don't know if I'm going to use them or not, but I've dug them out just in case um, we needed some extra bits and pieces to glue on. Bring here do we want to? yeah I might have a bit of fun with that one as well so we'll so take these off the little flower heads I'm gonna have to see if I can find some more springs like this little one or maybe use one of the bigger ones for the flower heads as well oh yeah that'll be handy with, uh, might have some more springs to follow so i'm going to go in oh wrong lid oh that was close I nearly poured the whole lot all over the place right so when you're taking the lids off of these things make sure you take the right bit off so i'm going to just drip in strategic places and let the ink do its job it will spread out And with the coils, I will probably roll them in the ink on the 
on the tin foil. So I finish the pool over. And this is where my where's the tin foil? Have I um Now it doesn't matter, I'll move that one out of the way because that one's already been done. It doesn't matter um, if they knock into each other because the colour will then just spread round a bit better. So I got a team new order just in time for this video. And I got my whole stencil and it looks like on the stencil that you're going into a funnel. So I'll be using that as a background stencil. So that's really good. And I got these beautiful reverse tweezers. So you squeeze in to open them up and you let go and it holds it and you don't have to have pressure on it normal tweezers is the opposite way around hence the name reverse tweezers so it's really handy when you're positioning something you can <laughs> you can put it in squeeze it let go so when you're maybe gluing something down it holds it in place for you and you can relax your fingers and you don't get such tense um, fingers it's good for hands like mine with the arthritis in them so that's uh, again that's uh, from my Timu so they're going to be coming in very handy now I'm going to pop that in there so we've done our what colour did I call this? Forgotten already. Tangerine on that side. Oh, I didn't do on that one, did I? Little dribble on that one. Roll it around. Bit more over there. Bit more over there. And now we're going to come in. These inks will last a long time. They may be a little bit pricey. You think, ooh, that's a bit steep, but they will last you. You only need a dribble at a time and it depends on oh, I did it again with the lid I did it again I took the wrong lid off take the top lid it shouldn't unscrew if it unscrews you've got the wrong lid I remember that don't I? Okay. so I'm going in and just dripping some I can't remember the colour of this one now, I did tell you, it was aqua green. And we'll go a little bit over this one. Now, one thing about these inks, you can let it dry and do another layer. So if you're not happy with the result, just let it dry and put a bit more on, put a different colour on. So I'm going to let these right you can also like tilt things and let it dribble down that sounds terrible doesn't it let it dribble down but let me show you so get the whole tin foil and I want that dribbling down the, the key that way that way dribbled onto there No, it's picked up some from the back as well where it's been laying in it which is good so, give them a roll in the, the ink that's on the on the tin foil nice roll unfortunately you do get your fingers inky as well but it will wear off eventually <laughs> three weeks so the next couple of episodes I might have inky fingers but that's fun I enjoy that 
So have a little play with your inks. Um, I think you can get full sets. The, these were just sample inks that I managed to acquire. I will try and get some more different colours to play with because I think they're going to be fun going forward. Showing up very well, but it's showing up now. There we go. So I'll put a little bit more of the, um, the tangerine. And because they're alcohol inks, basically the alcohol just needs to evaporate and um, it's dry. So they don't take very long to dry until um, they're finger, finger looking good. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise you to lick your fingers. I don't know what it would do to your insides. And um, I don't want to get any more cat paws or any these uh, techniques there right so I'm going to come back to that let that dry um, and we will have a cut these down behind the scenes that one needs to be in there so we're gonna have a little play I'll use this as a example because it's a, it's a bit floppy but it, it will do as a, an example to how I think we can do the um, edging for our cogs and stuff. Now cogs normally, I mean these ones I'm quite happy with but unfortunately as I went round they got a bit more uneven and then I come to the end and uh, I can only do a couple of thin ones so we want it so that it's a bit more even so I'm thinking we might be able to do it with a um, fold fold it fold it again Hold it again, but matching up the quad the quarters, and again matching up the quarters. So you've got it in basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. Now each piece. Now bear with me, my maths is not my strong point. Each piece will need to have a chunk out of it. So here, 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 and here, and we're nearly round. Here, here, and here. So, to now there's quite big gaps here so you might be able to fit another one in between this may be a smaller one in between so you've got a thick cog and a thin cog well that's how my cogs work it, they're not <laughs> they're not true to life <laughs> what is true to life and it gives you a rough pattern to work with So, and I found going diagonally from your start point will give you a little bit of a angled cog. I'm going to go in and out all the way along and then flap them up and cut the, them off. Now that one's a bit deep. So as you're cutting you can judge better as to where you want to cut. It doesn't have to be 100% even, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you'll 
finish this off and see how we go because what I'm thinking is if you can do a really nice one and go you know all out and get it even and etc then you can cut that and use it as a template on your other ones you might have to do if you're doing different size circles you might have to do a couple of templates but it would save you time in the long run um, in order to get them nice and even and matched up so that that's uh, another thought for doing this so I'll just show you a couple of these so fold it up and snip along fold it up and snip along try not to cut the bits the turrets that you've just done go around oh yes I did cut it thought I missed that one then okay so you get the general idea you can mark it um, you might even want to fold it into sixteenths um, and that might give you a better um, ratio to to mark your your turrets and your your, your divots whatever they're called tines aha uh -huh. that's what they're called are they okay. answers on a postcard please <laughs> I'm not very good with all this technico technological um, machinery type stuff but yeah so I'm going to wrap it up for now we got to a nice um, finishing point hopefully by the time you see us next time all this loveliness will be dry and nice and bright and colourful with the patina on them matches my scissors I wonder if they did it that way no I think these are enamelled um, and then we can start the build we're going to do the build but first of all we need to do the layering with our layering stencils I'm going to say tatty bye for now and I'll see you in the next one much love